Hi, this video is to briefly explain the natural selection lab that we'll be doing. And if you haven't lectured about natural selection yet, you will need to give a brief introduction. I really like to show the HHMI Howard Hughes Medical Institute rock pocket mouse video on natural selection, especially since it touches on predator and prey relationships and camouflage, which is very much what this experiment's about. So what you'll be doing is you will be laying two rugs out in the hallway. And I wish I had a picture of those laid out in the hallway, but I don't. These are the rugs. They'll be folded up somewhere in the classroom, rolled, it, rolled up or folded. And they'll either be black or they'll be a cream color. If they're black, then the black prey, which are beans, are going to camouflage the most. And those are worth the highest point value when they're captured. The white will stand out the most, so they're worth the least. If you end up with a white or cream colored rug, you'll have to reverse the point values on those beans. As far as the brown and red beans go, I'll let you decide which ones camouflage the most. And you might wanna change the point values on those. Anyway, you're going to lay these out in the hallway with enough room between the rugs that two students can be back to back around the perimeter of each rug. So you'll have 30 students trying to fit around two rugs. You'll wanna space them some distance apart. Also, there are often beans remaining from previous classes. If you want, you can shake those off and sweep them up before you start. Once you lay your rugs out, this is all with students in the classroom, so you can do this uninterrupted. You're going to come back in and you're going to grab some beans. I do not count these, even though the instructions say to count them. It doesn't make a difference. I also don't grab fewer black beans than the other colors. I just grab, you know, half a handful of each. I throw them in one of those little plastic weighing boats, I carry it out to the hallway and I evenly roughly distribute those on the two rugs so that they're spread out enough so that no matter where a student is positioned, they might have a chance of getting one. Then you're going to count the number of students in your classroom and you're going to as evenly as possible distribute their mouth parts. The whole premise is they are predators. There are four phenotypes for mouth part type in the population. So most of the time, it's not evenly divisible by five. They're giving you five choices here. Um, but I would say I highly recommend just using four mouth part types instead of five. If you use five, then one ends up not being hugely successful over the others. What I usually do is tweezers, spoons, straws, and knives. So on the lab, it currently says forks. You can cross that out and replace it with spoons. Spoons are clearly the easiest to pick up a bean with. Straws are clearly the losers most times unless you get some really aggressive straw yielding predators in your population. So as evenly as possible, you'll distribute these. If you're gonna end up with an extra one because it's not divisible by four, I would give an extra spoon. Then you're going to go to this little chart at the very beginning, table one, and you'll fill in the number in each group and figure out the percentage in the population. Now that you've done that, the beans are distributed. You have every student come over to the counter and pick up a stomach. These are the stomachs. They'll put these around their neck with the string. And the rule is they have to pick up the bean with their mouth part and place it into the stomach. They can't hold their cup and scoop or scrape beans into the cup. They have their stomach around their neck. They have their mouth part in their hand <laughs> and they're going to walk out to the rugs. You kind of evenly distribute students around the perimeter of each rug. They get down on their knees. You say start and you let them go for one minute. At the end of a minute, you say stop. They come back in the classroom and all the spoons get together, all the tweezers, all the knives, all the straws. They count their beans and that is going to go in table two. I like to put a spreadsheet on the screen 
and they call out their numbers to me and I type them in and that way everyone can just copy them from the screen. So I have an Excel spreadsheet projected and um, then I plug in formula so that when they tell me their numbers, it multiplies the black times eight and white times one and so on. I actually think that the red camouflage better than the brown. I'll let you decide that on the point value. Then what happens, you have your new total population and then you have to calculate the percentage of the total population that represents and then take that percentage and multiply it by the total number in your class. And you're going to redistribute mouth parts. So everyone has to bring theirs back. You often have to say this multiple times because someone will, for example, keep their spoon and now you're handing out mouth parts again and you end up with an extra one and you go, okay, who didn't turn in their mouth part last time because now you've messed everything up. Then you redistribute, you go out and do it a second time, same drill, and you do a third time. Now at the end, usually what happens is the forks or the spoons are the most successful and usually the straws have either completely died out or maybe there's just one left in the population. I actually have my students do a line graph that shows the change over the four population, I'm sorry, over the four generations. And I just have them do four different colors for the four um, mouth part types. So that's totally up to you. I'll get some colored pencils and leave them in the classroom and some graph paper. Then they answer the questions and that is it. Have fun.